Hey guys, and welcome back to Few Time Cracker Jacks. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make small batch strawberry jam. This is super simple, only requires three ingredients. There's no need for any pectin, there's no need for any gelatin, there's no need for any candy thermometers, there's no special tools, no special equipment for this, and it only makes just over a pint of finished jam. So without further ado, let's get started. So obviously the first ingredient that I need is fresh strawberries. Here I've got two pounds of fresh berries that I've gone ahead and washed, rinsed off. Uh, and using a melon baller, I'm just gonna top and chop these berries. Basically all I do is scoop the top, the leafy part out of the strawberry, and then using the melon baller part, I just kinda chop, roughly chop the berries into pieces, throw them into a bowl. Now this recipe only uses two pounds of strawberries. Uh, like I said in the beginning, it only makes just over a pint of finished jam. Um, I know there's tons of recipes for strawberry jam out there in internet land, uh, but most of them require, you know, tons and tons of berries, puts up way more strawberry jam than most people, you know, ever even really use in a year. So that's the nice thing about this recipe, you only need two pounds. Now, once you get all of your strawberries topped and chopped, you're gonna add some lemon juice. I'm using fresh lemon juice here, so I'm using a large lemon. You're only gonna need half of that, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in half and only juice half of it into my strawberries. If you are using a bottled lemon juice or uh, ready to use lemon juice, you're only gonna need about a tablespoon here. But using a fork, I'm going to juice this lemon into my strawberries. And I wasn't thinking at the time, so I got lemon seeds into my strawberries, no big deal. I'm just gonna go ahead and fish them out here in a minute. And then you wanna add in two cups of granulated sugar. This is just plain old white sugar. Using a spatula, you wanna to toss this so all of your strawberries get coated in that sugar. Basically what we're gonna do here is macerate our strawberries. The sugar is just gonna help release all of the water and moisture in the berries. Uh, it's gonna actually cut down the time that we need to cook this. Uh, but just go ahead and make sure that all your strawberries are completely coated in that sugar. It's also gonna help kinda of dissolve the sugar in the process. You wanna leave this on your counter to let macerate for about an hour or so. You can even do these overnight if you wanted to cover them and put them in the refrigerator. That's perfectly fine, but an hour is usually sufficient on the countertop. And after about an hour, you can see our fully macerated strawberries, how much juice this sugar has allowed this, these strawberries to release. It's really soupy, it's really juicy, it's pure deliciousness at this point. Uh, but you wanna transfer this to a large pan because we're gonna cook this down now. Now, as far as pan size, I'm using a four quart pan. You wanna use at least a four quart pan for this because this is going to uh, kind of bubble up and foam up. You wanna make sure that your pan is big enough that none of that's gonna overflow the top of your pan because it's just gonna make a sticky mess. So make sure that you use at least a four quart pan for this recipe. And over medium high heat, we wanna bring this up to a boil, stirring constantly. Now throughout this entire process, you're going to need to stir constantly. This is not something that you can just put on your stove and walk away from, you need to baby it. Since we're not using pectin, we're not using gelatin, we're not using any of the fancy stuff, uh, it's just sugar and berries and lemon juice, you're basically making a strawberry candy here. We're gonna have to cook this down until it is the proper consistency. Now you can see here my berry mixture has started to come up to a boil, uh, and this is really the time that you wanna you know, adjust your heat. If it starts sticking on the bottom, you're gonna need to take it off and lower the heat. Uh, once it starts sticking and burning on the bottom, game over. Uh, there's no wiggle room there. So turn your heat down between medium and medium high. Again, stirring constantly. I cannot stress that enough to stir constantly during this process. Uh, you can see how it starts to foam up quite a bit as you're stirring it. If it starts to get up to the very top of your pan, just go ahead and lift your pan up off the heat and again, continue stirring and that'll help kind of the foam retract down a little bit. And here we are after we have cooked this for about 20 minutes or so. We're about halfway through now. Uh, you're still gonna need to continue to stir this constantly, but you can see the foam, the color of the foam has darkened up quite a bit. Uh, the mixture has thickened up a little bit, but we're still going to need to cook this down. So again, with the heat between medium and medium high, I'm gonna continue stirring and continue reducing this mixture. Now you're probably wondering, you know, without a candy thermometer, how do I know that this is done? Well, there's a couple things that you can check for. Uh, the first is the foam of the strawberry mixture. When this is done cooking and it is at the proper temperature, the foam on top, you will actually be able to stir it in and you won't have any more foam on the top. That's one way that you know that it will be done. 
Uh, second way that you'll know that it'll be done is the, the sound of the boiling is gonna change on you. It's no longer gonna sound just like boiling water. It's gonna sound like it's boiling something thick. And it sounds identical to if you were making, if you've ever made uh, pudding from scratch or custard or even just gravy, it's gonna sound really thick. And the bubbles popping is, you'll know it when you hear it. So as you can see here, as I'm stirring this, the foam has gone away. Uh, the bubbling has kind of ceased a little bit. So I know now that my jam is done. But if you want to take one more measure and make sure that your jam is done, what you're going to want to do is take a plate at the beginning of this process and put it in your freezer. Once you think that your jam is done, you want to take a spoonful of that and put it onto the plate that has just been taken out of the freezer. You want this nice and frozen cold. Just spread out a spoonful of your jam on the plate and run your finger straight through it. And when you tip that plate up on its side, if it stays put and that line that you drew in with your finger stays put, you know that your jam is done. Now don't worry about that jam being extra hot. Uh, putting it on the frozen plate cools it almost instantaneously. Now I'm not going to be processing this jam and I know most people don't have the equipment to process this. I understand that it's a small batch. Um, so all I'm gonna do is transfer this mixture into jars. Uh, because that jam is so hot and it's l essentially a liquid candy, uh, you wanna make sure that your jars are also hot. So put some boiling water into your jars, let them sit for a good 10 minutes or so and let them come up to temperature so they're nice and hot. Uh, and then you can add your hot jam to the hot jars. And I'm just using a canning funnel here to do this and a little ladle. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, this makes just over a pint of finished jam. So I've got three half pint jars here. Uh, each half pint is eight ounces, but just go ahead and top those off and then you can add lids and bands to these. And again, because we're not processing these, you're going to need to store them in the refrigerator. Now, even though we didn't process these, these are still gonna last right around six months or so in the refrigerator. Just go ahead and make sure that you write on the top with a magic marker or put a piece of tape or something on it and write on that the date that you cooked this, but then go ahead and store this in the refrigerator and then you can use it for whatever you prefer to use jam on. Most commonly, I have mine on buttermilk biscuits or on a piece of toast, as you can see here. And you can see, you know, without using pectin, without using a can candy thermometer, no special equipment, this is a perfect consistency jam. And I know people are gonna ask this in the comments, you know, can I use other berries besides strawberries? Yes, you can. This works just the same with all the berries. I've successfully made this using just blueberries, just raspberries, uh, using a mixture of blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries, using uh, strawberries and blueberries together. Any combination of berries that you want or any single berry that you want, this all works the same for. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoy learning how to make strawberry jam small batch style without any special tools, equipment, or ingredients. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe for more deliciousness and to keep up to date on all my latest videos. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you next time.